this video we're going to be talking about a concept called topic modeling and this is a much longer video than you guys are used to because it's such a deep and important concept over time you've probably heard this concept referred to in a number of ways from hub and spoke to power pages to pillar concepts to this topic clustering model that i'm going to talk about now but essentially they all refer to the same thing and it's a system and method to organize content on a website. This method uses a single page or a pillar page that acts as the hub for other posts or the clusters that are around it and support it through internal links. And there's a number of SEO benefits from using this method. First and foremost, it puts you in a position to rank for these larger and more competitive keywords. The pillar page is usually something that's a lot more in-depth, has a lot more information, but then it's also supported by smaller clusters with internal links that serve as a means to deeper display your knowledge on a very competitive subject. This method also helps to improve user journeys in UX by helping people path through the website from these pillar pages or from these cluster pages to find and discover more information about these complex and competitive topics. This method also helps to create a semantic relationship between pages, helping search engines to understand content depth and relationships across your website. And from a business point of view, it facilitates content strategy by keeping you focused on the core topics, the things that mean the most to your business. And it helps you execute a much more targeted and focused content marketing campaign without wasting time and resources writing about a lot of stuff that's not going to ultimately impact your top line. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the topic cluster model or the pillar model. So it starts with these pillar pages. These are going to be large topics that are core to business operations. And this is just my opinion, but I always like to start by mapping these topics back to your core product or service functionality, your audience or your industry. This helps us to stay focused on the things that matter. Again, the things that are going to drive traffic that are going to ultimately impact the business's top line, but also help to keep your website in line in talking about things that you should be talking about, which I'll talk about in a second. The clusters, you can see all the cluster topics that are stemming off formerly called spoke pages from the pillar or the hub page. And again, these are the topics that support and explore all possible options for traffic and engagement based on that big topic. Again, these pillar topics are gonna be large items that generally will require supporting information that you don't necessarily need or want on that pillar page, but can be broken off into their own direct URL. And that own direct URL can rank for that longer tail search, but also serve as a means to support that pillar page and give that necessary depth to that larger and more competitive topic. So when we're coming up with ideas for these pillar pages, these hub pages, the first thing I always like to ask is, does it map back to our product, our service, or customer, or industry? And if it doesn't, why, why even waste time or resources trying to put it together? While content should inform and entertain, if it doesn't ultimately help the business, it's kind of a waste of time and resources, especially when we're talking about doing this from the agency point of view. We don't want to waste any of our time and resources. We're already working way too much as is in teetering that profitability line. Why make it more difficult? Focus on things that are going to make the client happy traffic that's going to convert or traffic that's going to lead eventually to a conversion or help facilitate that path to conversion. The other thing that I really like to ask, is this something that we have any business talking about? And this has really been developed. This algorithm update came out in 2018 that really rocked the health industry mainly that a lot of people are calling the medic update. This medic update really, really helped to solidify this method in my mind as a necessary aspect of all SEO campaigns. Because what happened was, just like all good marketers, we like to ruin everything. <laughs> we looked at content marketing as a means to get more and more traffic. So what happened was we were developing more and more topics that didn't really relate back to the business. They were just traffic for the sake of traffic. And when we're talking about industries like medical or health, you have all these pages on the website, yeah, that are getting traffic, but in all reality, they're ultimately deceiving people because you're making claims about stuff. And just because you're using external link to Wikipedia or to WebMD, it doesn't make you an expert on that subject. What ultimately makes a website an expert on a subject in the eyes of search engines is content depth. So using this pillar cluster model, and then also popularity. So links, shares, engagement on that content, but just developing a content marketing strategy to go after as many topics as possible because you sell protein powder, talking about all these different things doesn't make you an authority in the subject on it. And in my mind, that's ultimately what this algorithm update really did was it took away a lot of visibility from websites who just didn't deserve to be talking about these things. So if you stick to the core of what your business is, these pillars, these hubs, and you create supporting content around that, and then you go out and promote it the right way through links, you can pretty much rank for whatever you want over time. So let's talk about some examples. But before I do, let me preface it with this, is that there's no right or wrong way to do this. This is a framework that needs to be 
customize based on the website you're working on. I'm gonna give you as many examples as I can that have different types of websites to show you, but what I want you to see is that the concept of the pillar is gonna shift depending on the website. Let me start with a very basic example. I'm gonna use Webris because I've been using it throughout this training, which is your standard B2B lead generation service website. So the very top, the website is a digital agency, right? The aspects that are core to the business, the services that we offer are social media, pay-per-click, SEO, design, development. Now, once we've identified those, we can start to build out what the pillars of each of those are. Right? What is the supporting content that we want to put on the website that's going to support the core concepts and the core goals of the business, which is to generate leads for these services? So if we look at SEO in particular, what are some of the pillars of SEO? What makes up SEO as a service? Things like technical SEO, keyword research, on-page, link building. So let's talk about technical SEO. Technical SEO in itself is a massive topic. That is a pillar topic. Ranking and getting exposure for the keyword and keywords around technical SEO is definitely going to help to drive the business and drive leads. But because that's such a deep topic, there's a ton of different spokes or clusters that come off of that that deserve their own pages and that can capture their own traffic as well. So things like canonical tags, exploring what those are, that supports technical SEO, robots.txt file, sitemaps, status codes, 404s, 301s, etc. how those affect technical SEO, indexation, how to get more pages indexed, how to understand the indexation, and all the different tools we can use for technical SEO. And I'm going to show you in one second how I built this out on my website and how I rank for a lot of these terms. But all of these things should link back. All of these clusters should link back to that technical SEO pillar page to help boost that pillar topic. And then ultimately, we want to interlink the pillar pages in our core pages, right? Those pages that are core on our website, those service pages, we want to path people through. We might not be able to rank those core pages because we're talking about national or potentially very competitive local terms but we still wanna interlink them to show that semantic relationship and to help path people through to the pages that are gonna convert people. So what would be another pillar of SEO? Link building is another great one, right? And how do we break link building down? Things like guest posting, uh, influencer outreach, broken link building, processes for how to do link building, outreach tactics, prospecting tactics, and again, linking these back to the SEO page. And you can keep doing this, right? We can go into keyword research. We can go into all different aspects of keyword research on page. And then looking at the other services, pay-per-click, design, development, social, breaking out these pillars and the clusters that support them as well. And then how can we interlink them all back to our core pages? So let's look at this live and practice for Webris. So here's our core page for SEO. This is our SEO services page. And when we scroll down here, this is a service page. This talks about SEO, serve, SEO agency services. And when we come down here, we've got these little tabs here, and you can see when we have where we talk about a technical SEO audit. So of course, what do we do is we link to a page on our site that's about a technical SEO audit, which is this page right here. Now, you'll notice this is not a services page. This is a blog post that talks about how to do a technical SEO audit. Now, that's because in the future, I'm probably going to want to launch a service page for technical SEO. But if I have a page on the website that's about technical SEO services, two of them, then they're going to cannibalize each other. So we want to make sure when we're creating these pillar pages that you understand how to not cannibalize keywords and you can go after keywords that are rankable. So this page, I went after the keywords how to do a technical SEO audit and technical SEO checklist. And then within this massive page, table of contents, you can see that I've basically broken down the different hubs or the clusters within here. And it gives me the opportunity to create those clusters on separate pages. So for example, when we just scroll down, and we're going to look at the findability section, right? So each of these, like I said, it has their own little subsection. We've got a section about indexation. We've got a section about robots.txt. And of course, this here is going to link to my cluster page about robots.txt. So when I click on that, it will take you to this page here about robots.txt file, right? And then I'm going to link this page back to the technical SEO audit and probably back to our SEO services page as well to create those semantic relationships through links. Now, we look at how this performs. If I Google technical SEO audit checklist, Look who's ranking for it right here, right? And you can even see here how these clusters are pulling through with site links. And we talk about those clusters specifically. If I Google how to index pages in Google, look, look who's got the knowledge graph here in a page that's about how to get your pages indexed in Google. And then of course, this page is going to link back to my SEO service page and my technical SEO page. And of course, what this does too is the better the content that we create for these pillars and for these clusters, the more links that we can get and the more equity we can pass through all these pages through these internal links. That's how you create authority. That's how you create topical relevance by understanding the hubs and the pillars and the spokes that you should be talking about and then building out the best content off the back of that. And of course, then going out and promoting the hell out of them through social media, outreach, and links.
So let's take a look at another live example. So this is from our agency from the future. Now, again, this is also a digital agency, but because the concepts and the core of what we do are different than what we did at Webris, that's going to impact the pillars. That's going to impact the content of the website. That's going to impact the strategy. So at the top, of course, the site is a digital agency in the core of what we do. And again, you can see how these are not services. So this is important. Remember how I talked about having a strategy for each of these and understanding what it is that the business does and what you want out of it. There's different ways that you can approach this. So we came up with three things that are core to what it is that we want to, to communicate about our business and how we want to market ourselves. Those three things are technical marketing, functional design, so things like UX, UI, and automation and tech. We want to show people that we are technically proficient at marketing, design, and automation. So that's the core of what we do. And of course, our services live within that. So again, it doesn't have to be our service. Like it doesn't have to be technical SEO, it doesn't have to be SEO, it doesn't have to be pay per click, et cetera. They can be a little bit more abstract to that as well. So some of the pillars that we can define underneath that. So again, SEO is a pillar underneath technical marketing, but we want to look at this from a technical marketing scope. So looking at things like tools, that's always an easy win, the technical tools for SEO. Things like Python for SEO, data scraping. Things like Python for SEO, how to use some tech, some advanced tech to do SEO. Of course, technical SEO in itself, having some content on there about technical SEO. How to scale link outreach using different technical solutions like Google Sheets, APIs, things like that. Different reporting solutions, so how we automate reporting using Data Studio, again, using Sheets, using BigQuery, using all these different technical platforms. And different things with data scraping, so how we're doing keyword research at mass, scraping all these different data sources. These are the things that we want to communicate about ourselves. And then, of course, we want to link that back to our page about technical marketing to complete that circle. So another thing within technical marketing is social, right? We do social media as well. So what are the technical aspects within social media that we can talk about? Tools, lead capture and email sequences, funnel building tactics, Facebook pixel setup guides, creating custom Facebook conversions and remarketing tactics. And of course, we want to link that back to our technical marketing page. So you can see how this is a similar business with different core concepts, similar services, but how we approach it differently for how we're structuring these pillars in these clusters off the back of it. It's just a different means to communicate a service and a different market position that we want to take for this agency. So let's look at another one. Let's look at an e-commerce example, because this is something I get asked about a lot. So let's talk about a coffee vendor. And I'm going to use Blue Bottle as an example, and I'll show you live on their website how they did this, but I'm gonna show you how I would do it if I was strategizing for them. So the things that are core to them, coffee, brewing, and locations. So they sell coffee online, they sell brewing items online, and they also have a number of store locations. So how can we communicate all these things through pillars and topic clusters and keeping it relevant? So I define one of their pillars as brewing. Now, I know that's also one of their core things, but again, going back to the strategy and understanding and applying this to smaller website, this is not a coffee retailer where they've got thousands of different types of coffee, different brands. They have only their coffee and a few different SKUs of that and then a few different brewing products. But we still want to take and try and apply this model to them. But we can't make things up. We can't go out of our way to, to add pillars that aren't relevant to the business. So it's okay if your pillars match what your core is. And it's also okay if you want to go a little bit more abstract, which I'll show you how they did in a second. But if we call one of our pillars brewing, what are the different clusters or spokes that can come off of that? So things like using a French press, a comparison of coffee grinders, how to make cold brew at home, different brewing recipes you can make, how to make coffee for the holidays, eggnog coffee, spike coffee, etc., and how to make a nitro cold brew. So you can see these are all different sp supporting spokes that people are searching for that support the overall pillar of brewing. But also, if we rank for these terms, these are highly relevant long tail terms that are going to drive highly relevant targeted traffic back to the business that might not convert the first time, but can easily remark it off the back of this on social or even paid search. And of course, we'd want to link this back to our brewing stuff, which I'll show you in a second. So I want to talk about local and locations. This is interesting. This is something that we run into with a lot of local clients, and they just don't know how to deal with content generation for local stuff. So if one of your pillars is local, like you, you have locations in five different places, Miami, San Francisco, New York, etc., how can you create local content as a pillar? And what are the spokes that would come off of it? So first of all, in terms of organization, what I would probably do is set up a subfolder for each of your cities. And within those subfolders, they would basically be category pages like on WordPress that you would, 
that you would select and this content would live on specifically. So again, we're actually creating physical pillars in physical silos on the website using categories. And within those categories, we would publish content like things to do in that area. So for example, our offices in Wynwood, we had a actually a, a, a coffee shop that had 10 locations and one of them was in, in Wynwood. So if people are searching for things to do in Wynwood, things to do in New York City, and you have a list of 20 different things, you know people are there, you know people are looking for things to do, and if they come to your website, they're gonna be a lot more likely to stop by your actual location. But more importantly, what you can do is if somebody comes to your page on your coffee website about things to do in Wynwood, Miami, is then you set up a retargeting campaign on Facebook for when they are within one mile radius, you start showing them video ads to stop by with a coupon. It works really, really well. <clears throat> You can do things like interviews with local influencers, right? Because people are always searching Google for people in their local area. You can create that, that hyper local relevance by featuring them on your website and capturing that traffic. Again, local interviews or a podcast, launch a podcast. And I know some of these things aren't necessarily blog content, but this is the state of the internet. It's not just about blogging. Content does not just have to be on your blog. Content is about media. Getting your stuff out into as many places as possible. You do things like local partnerships, announce those locally on your site, have them promote it, talking about a roundup of the different events to do in, your, in, in that area. So, Or you could do a post-blogging event of coverage of that event. There's always events that are coming to win with different art shows, things like that. Doing a blog post summary with pictures and stuff like that is a great thing to add to your website. And then of course, you link those back to your local landing pages. So what you've done is you've created an actual physical, physical silo of local content, which ideally, would generate hyper-local hyper external links, people linking to that stuff as a citation source, which you are then internally linking, push that equity back to your locations pages, which will help to rank it for local keywords, things like coffee shops in Miami, et cetera. So I wanna actually show you what they've done on Blue Bottle because I really like it. So I am on, they created a subdomain for their blog. So they've got actual physical silos on here where their content can live. So when I was talking about the coffee as one of their pillars, here it is right here, and it's got all these links to great content about coffee. Culture and community, These are this is their version of local in my opinion. This is a way that they've figured out how to incorporate that local stuff onto their website. And then lab notes is what I was talking about when I was talking about brewing, all the different ways to make cold brew. Uh, here's the one about holiday stuff, how to do coffee in 2019, et cetera. And then if we go to their root website, we can see how these silos fit into what it is that they're doing. So you've got shop, visit, learn. This is where their uh, stuff is. Visit, here's all their local locations. And then shop, you can see here, they've got these silos here for coffee, brewing, and essentials. So this maps exactly what I was talking about when it comes to our core things matching up with our pillars for coffee, brewing, and locations. You can see how this passes through their website and it creates these physical silos of relevance. Now I wanna run through another e-commerce example. And of course, I'm gonna go through my shoelaces store laces out because man, I just did a great job with it. And I wanna show you how I did it on the front end as well. So the site was a shoelaces store in the core was shoelaces. That's it. <laughs> There's really nothing to get too much. There's, you really can't get too fancy because we only sold one product. We had like 20 different SKUs. There is nothing additional that we could go out of our way to create because it would be irrelevant. But when we talk about the pillars within that, of course, one of them is gonna be shoelaces as well, but how can we develop these nice spokes off the back of it? So I came up with things like sneaker shoelacing sizing, uh, different lacing styles, uh, different lacing replacement guides, so like how to replace laces on your Air Jordans, Air Maxes, etc. Uh, different lace swaps, so and it's crazy. People are crazy about their sneakers, so they wanted different different lacing styles that they could have, different lacing colors, uh, and they wanted to see what it would look like. So I was creating blog posts that was showing like Jordans with different laces. Of course, that were our laces, but it was a way to create this content and drive them into the store. Uh, specific sneaker styling. So again, like talking about all the different lacing tactics you can do for an Air Max, uh, and people are searching for this in droves. And then of course that pushes into lacing tutorials, which I did on YouTube. So I would do actual like on feet, me with a camera lacing sneakers, and they would get tens of thousands of views. It was crazy. And of course, this content would all link back directly to shoelaces. So when I would do these different posts, which I'll show you in a second, they would get a ton of traffic when they would rank, and then they would link directly back to the product pages, which of course, ranked well as well. So something else that we came up with was sneaker culture. So when we talk about uh, these different pillars, again, this is something that's a little bit more abstract. This is going based off the audience. This is digging into who my customer was and what they were looking for and what they were interested in. That's still hyper relevant to the business. So we sold 
shoelaces for sneakers. Talking about sneaker culture, especially in regards to shoelaces and the different things we can do with it was not very much of a pivot. So what are some of the spokes that came off the back of that? We came up with a release calendar on the website. We built a little custom functionality in the site. We would build a blog post that talked about the upcoming release of a sneaker. It would pull through onto the calendar. And we actually ranked for sneaker release dates, which was a, almost a 1 million a month searches. Huge keyword. Uh, different things talking about fake versus real. So there's a lot of like kind of fun uh, and playful humor on the web talking about like different fake sneakers and Jordans. And we did a, comparison, a bunch of comparison guides for fake versus real that we just scraped Pinterest and Instagram to find. Different sneaker maintenance guides, so how to clean, uh, how to refurbish, things along that nature. Uh, different sneaker pictures on feet. Uh, this helps us rank really, really well in Google Images and still to this day. Uh, best of lists, so best sneakers, uh, best Air Maxes, best Jordans, um, and then best of the year, or best of the month, so best sneakers of 2018, best sneakers of January uh, 2018, etc. And of course, these would link back as well. So let me show you this live on the website. So first and foremost, this is the blog. And just for the record, too, somebody bought the site off me and they totally botched everything up on here. Uh, but you can see here, this is a guide about Air Max, uh, Air Max lacing, dif different lacing swaps that I talked about. I'll show you that real quick. Uh, same thing with ASICs here, just going after these big branded keywords. Uh, here are the pictures of the Jordan uh, on feet things. Here's a different lace swap for a different uh, sneaker and the different laces that we had. You can see I just took custom images in here, uh, made everything branded and super clean. Here's a look at what the picture, uh, just again, I, I actually went out and bought these sneakers and then just returned them afterwards and took all these pictures, just put my sneaker laces in there uh, to just show people comparison before and after to give them different ideas and then uh, hopefully dry purchases for it. And all these things actually ranked really well, Air Max lacing guides. Uh, I'm not sure if they're still ranking, but at the time when I had this, these things were ranking really well. These ones I just scraped from other people and just noted with a link, um, different on pay, different on feet images, sorry. And these, again, like I said, ranked really well in Google Images and drove a lot of relevant traffic back to the website. Here's the shoelace sizing guide. So this ranked for a uh, shoelace sizing guide. This was something that we linked to at the top navigation. This is such a big core and pillar to what we did um, that this keyword was super important. We had this custom design that just went through all the different types of shoelaces, uh, different types of sneakers and the different types of laces. Um, really, really important guide that drove a, a lot of sales to the website. Here's the release calendar that I talked about. Uh, so when you would publish a blog, po blog post with this date, it would pull through here uh, and you could go through these different dates. And I haven't updated this obviously in years because I sold the website, uh, but this would pull through the different sneakers here that they could then go and visit. So this was uh, going off of the sneakerhead stuff. These are the different guides that we did. So we built these really massive different guides. And of course, you can go through the website yourself to see these things. Uh, but this resources section that had all these different basically pillar pieces of content in here um, or these different hub spoke hub these different spoke contents in here, um, cluster contents, whatever you want to call them in, in this guide here. Uh, here's an example of the history of Jordan sneakers and each one of these then would link down into a very deep page like this. And the goal was to rank for the, the keyword Jordan one sneaker, which a lot of these did at the time because they were so in depth, they had a lot of good information, a lot of good images, a really engaging page that people were looking for. But all these ended up pushing back to the products that we were selling. So the final example I want to show you guys is for a cannabis company that I was working for. This was a single product company, single product e-commerce website that sold a decarboxylation machine. Now, this was a much different approach than all the other sites I worked on because of the nature of the website and because of the nature of, of being a singular, literally a singular SKU website. The, developing these type of clusters is going to be a little bit more challenging. So, so at the core of what we were doing, number one was cannabis research. Now, instead of creating different pillars off the back of this, like I said, sometimes the core is the pillars. So the cannabis research served as the pillar for what we were doing because the site was only about one different product. So things that we put underneath this cannabis research were different decarboxylation myths. So I'm not going to get into what decarboxylation is because it's a very, very confusing topic. Um, but the point is, is that we had to use a lot of different scientific research and data to communicate this. So we had to go out of our way to build a pillar on the website that was specifically built for cannabis research to convince people that we were experts in this field and that our product would help them get what they needed out of their cannabis. So we went and built a research-driven guide about decarboxylation myths using different science, uh, a guide to decarboxylation, basically breaking down the science of it, uh, different dosage for cannabis, again, broken down by lab testing that we actually paid to get, uh, THC infusing testing. We also paid a lab to do different tests on different THC infusion styles, um, just a guide on different types of cannabis, the differences of strands, and then testing the strands of that THC as well in a lab. So we literally went out and paid a lab a good amount of money to do these tests and to give us the scientific research that we could then take, publish on the website as uh, research-driven case studies that would really bode well in terms of not only traffic, but generating links and attention to the brand as well. 
So another pillar was cannabis usage. So we wanted to come up with different usage guides. So things like sublingual dosing, uh, how to make sublinguals, uh, alternatives to can of butter, uh, ways to consume cannabis, different cannabis types. Again, that's a typo there, but, uh, and then weed oil usages. And of course, all these things mentioned, uh, failed to mention this before, uh, should be interlinked together. Uh, and the final one, this is more for top funnel traffic, but was for cannabis recipes. So brownies, cookies, uh, milkshakes, edibles, ice cream, and cake. And let me show you what this looks like on the website. So this is on their education section of the website. And you can see here, these are the actual physical silos that I created. So when you click on this, it will redirect you to a category page where all the recipes live. So here are all the things that I talked about, cookies, pizza. Um, these ranked really well, drive, still drive a lot of traffic to this day. Another one here is different cannabis research. So the things that I was talking about, decarb myths debunked. And of course, I, I highly recommend that you go through this website to read this content yourself. I just realized this video is getting long. I don't want to bore you. And then of course, the different usage guides here that I talked about as well. And the traffic on this website is going through the friggin' roof. Uh, and they haven't published a piece of content in almost a year now. But it's all because we went through and we consolidated this content. We pushed it into single uh, relevant topical single relevant topical silos, organized it much better, cleaned up all their crap content and consolidated into these much more robust clusters uh, organized under these very succinct pillars. So the last thing I wanna talk about, and this is a little bit more abstract and strategy, is doing this across domain. So I have a number of businesses and websites that are all in the same space. So I have my agency, old agency website, Webris, that has a lot of traffic, a lot of content. My personal website, ryanwashere.com. I have the blueprint training and I've also got my technical agency from the future. So if I've got all these similar websites, how do I keep these things siloed topically? So I'm not number one, creating a content overlap. Number two, I'm getting the most out of my time and resource for content development, but I'm also building these websites into highly targeted websites that are targeting specific niches and specific gaps and holes in the market. So I had to go back and literally go through all my content, go through the content audit process for each of these and do this basically topical modeling to understand what it is that I wanted each of these websites to communicate, how to organize it. And then I went through a redirect process where I literally redirected like 15 different blog posts on Webris, on my personal website, to really make sure that these things are all living on the right website as well. So I look at these websites almost as pillars or as hubs that I want to communicate across all of my businesses. So within Webris, uh, I wanted to do things like case studies, but a little bit more like growth hacky case studies, uh, growth driven case studies, focusing more on local and small business type marketing uh, and then service-based content which i talked about before for ryan was here I, I wanted to focus more on entrepreneurship i want to do more hacks and tips uh, my interviews and podcasts and then focusing on the community anything community driven would be living on that website so on webris i don't want anything that's hack or entrepreneurship or really like kind of like you know tips like that i want those to live on my personal website because it's a little less professional in a sense, and Webris is a client services business, I don't really wanna talk about those things on the website anymore. So I went through and redirected a ton of content into my personal website uh, and migrated it over there. On the blueprint, I wanted to get everything on here that's talking about processes, tools, trainings, and agency help. I wanted all my agency tips to live here because ultimately we're selling an agency training. So all my content that was on Webris and Ryan was here that was talking about agency stuff, processes, all these different tools, I'm in the process of redirecting them all to the blueprint training and creating pages on there where they can live in a much more relevant silo and build the relevancy on that site for these core topics. And then of course, at From the Future, like I said, everything technical, uh, case studies but driven by my staff, all the different automation solutions that we're building, and anything enterprise living, I want to live, any, anything enterprise driven, I want to live on this website. So again, going through and identifying all these different topics on all of my websites, and then going through the process of not only updating them, but then physically redirecting them to live on the right domain to build that overall domain level relevancy that's ultimately made up by these topics and silos. So to wrap things up, we want to use pillars and clusters to organize content for improved performance with both search engines and with users to pass them, path them through the right way. Uh, we want to start this process early. Like I'm going through this in our content audit module because we want to start thinking about these things as we're thinking about the content on the website. So before we even start thinking about which topics to generate, we want to understand the overall topical targeting strategy, pillars, and all these different clusters that can come off of them as well. Because ultimately, these things are moving targets. And as we talk about keyword gap analysis and finding more and more keywords for the website, 
we're going to be adding more pillars, but we want to have a base and core understanding of how and where we want this website to go. So that was a very long video on topic modeling, but it's incredibly important. In the next video, we're going to be talking about deep diving into the URL actions within the content audit. So I'll see you guys there.